Hello, ladies and gentlemen, cast. Welcome to the Mexican City Grand Prix or Mexico City Grand Prix. A uh, few words here and there, but yeah, uh, we are here for a hot lap and setup guide. Let's go through the hot lap in slow mo, corner by corner. What you need to do, what you need to avoid, followed by the setup that I'm using. Uh, and then finally, we'll have the full speed hot lap at the very end. So the timestamps are in the description and in the timeline below if you want to skip to those parts. Uh, very quickly, thank you to all channel members and subscribers for supporting the channel. And now let's get into the track guide here. So uh, to start off your lap around Mexico, well, pretty much starts with the last corner. You want to make sure you get a good possible exit. Take a very wide line to start your hot lap. But if it's a racing lap, just stay to the middle. That's perfect as well. Now, during this long straight, just stick straight, <laughs> right? Uh, don't move anywhere. And uh, we're going to head into turn one, where you're going to be having a lot of overtakes. You want to be spotting this uh, 100 meter board that's coming up right ahead. Or as you pass the overhead crane, that's going to be your reference uh, to where you need to break. Uh, if you can't spot the 100 meter, spot the crane once you pass it. And uh, throughout this entire track, in, throughout the in transition of the corners, you want to keep a little bit of throttle on everywhere. So turn one, you can take a little bit of the curb, avoid that orange sausage. And now here's the first example of keeping some amount of throttle throughout the corner, which is going to gain you lap time as well, and will improve the car stability because you're gaining speed. That's how uh, well downforce works in this uh, ground effect cars. Turn two. Take a lot of the inside curb, but reduce your throttle while taking it. And then uh, once the car has fully exited the curb, that's where you can start to increase the throttle. Use all the exit. And now bring the car over to the right hand side to start sector two. Before that, you're going to be greeted with the 100 meter board uh, on the bottom right or the top right. And uh, break at 100, you can break maybe even later around 80 or 90 meters for a qualifying session um, and uh, importantly once again you can take a lot of the inside curb put half your car over it or you can completely avoid that orange sausage and once again maintain some amount of throttle while transitioning from one corner to another and again this right hander apply a little bit of throttle to get the car accelerating and carry the momentum out of it Keep it in third gear on the exit use all the exit curb bring your car over to the left and now on the left side spot that black pole or that tv or that crane in between of them that's going to be your turning in point and uh, since this is a double right hander you want to make sure you get this both correct there you go again maintain some throttle and now into the s section very fast very risky to invalidate your lap time spot that msc board or the black board once you're past that immediately turn in and downshift you don't need to brake here at all even in the race sometimes first part of the s take a lot of that inside curb put half of your car on it second part of it again only half of your car on it avoid touching that green part uh, otherwise your car bottoms out and you will lose some time and lose momentum throughout the s section right and now the third part of the s uh, you can put as much uh, Take as much curb as you want and go flat out. In the race, you may have to lift a little bit before you reach this fourth part. But otherwise, it's all the way flat here. Open up DRS, bring the car over to the left hand side on the track limits here. And now as the curb starts, or the 100 meter board on the left, or the black box after that on the left. Uh, that's going to be your braking reference. Get a very tight entry. Make sure you get this right but avoid that orange sausage cup once again and use all the exit space that you have to maximize the speed that you carry and one, uh, <coughs> excuse me, very quickly bring the car over to the right hand side half over the curb and uh, as the curb starts, brake very lightly uh, to get the car turned in to the left hand side so you want to sacrifice this first part of this chicane carry less speed here so that you can stabilize the car for the second right hander because well uh, if you sacrifice this first corner carry less speed it allows you to open up this right hander and carry more speed and take more of the curb uh, find a way that suits you but uh, regardless uh, on the exit you want to make sure the car is straightened out 
and once it is straight look for the black box on the top once you pass that that's going to be your turning in point sometimes you just need to tap the brake sometimes you just need to turn the car into the corner avoid that orange sausage curb on the right hand side and now let the car straighten out and apply throttle as you come out of the corner stay to the right to minimize track distance and gain a few more thousands for your hot lap and there you go that is a hot lap around mexico well more like a track guide around mexico you'll see the hot lap at the very end and now that we have done this track guide let's get into the setup and the important thing to know about mexico is it's a very low grip track surface which means uh, you don't you're not going to get much grip from the tires you need a lot of aerodynamic grip here as well so shortly you're going to see that we are running a super high downforce setup here 50 40 on the wings that is the highest downforce that you can run around here and honestly downforce is key around here in your qualifying lap however in a race situation actually <laughs> it's better to run lower downforce so if you have park for me turned on you might as well run 40 30 or 45 35 to be good in race and qualifying uh, if it's you know mixed condition race i'd say go for 50 40 you're going to be doing very well in the rain as well and then uh, we move on to transmission quite standard 90 on throttle you can even use 100 on throttle which is you know the standard uh, thing to do in slow corners uh, whereas for the high speed section like sector 2 s section you can use 80 percent to get the car uh, more responsive more rotation under acceleration and then we move on to off throttle i'm using 20 percent to keep the car stable during the transition from left to right or right to left uh, where you have to half throttle some corners uh, and you can use 30 percent in the race to increase that stability because well you know medium tires and hard tires don't have as much grip engine braking you can leave it at 100 or you can drop it to 90 if you're really struggling with rear locking in the race um, but otherwise i'll suggest you make other changes before touching the engine braking so leave that at 100 percent and now uh, let's move on to the suspension geometry once again it is quite standard all minimum it's the fastest way to set up the car minimal drag maximum cornering so uh, you know you don't want to mess this up now suspension this is where we have all our magic tricks so we start off with the front suspension at 36 because uh, it responds much better on the curbs in this track you can still try to go with 41 if you really want a lot more stability but you'll find the car bouncing a little bit on the curbs uh, but yeah either way 36 on the front you can play around with the front right head around 22 is just nice around here you can go up to 24 to get a little bit more stability but lower is always better to get more downforce but not necessarily better on the curves right uh, speaking of which uh, the rear suspension is at one so you can absorb the curves very nicely and because there's a lot of slow corners the car is going to be very slow you can lower your right height and this will not bottom out in the high speed corners so it's a good thing to lower your car for um, for this track and then we talk about the anti-roll bars usually we have 21 21 as our starting point which is again a good baseline but for this track specifically i'm getting a lot of mid corner uh, and understeer a mid corner and exit understeer so i've softened it to 16 gives me more rotation mid corner and uh, it may be a little bit over steering on the exit but if you can control it you'll gain a lot of lap time overall you can of course reduce your front entry roll bar even more for more mid corner grip but again the less you go on the entry roll bar the more oversteer you get on the exit rear entry roll bar at 21 to give you maximum rear rotation you can drop it down to 19 or 18 if the rear is sliding too much and for the brakes 100 percent brake pressure in the dry um, for mixed conditions or if it's fully raining you can go down all the way down to 97 which is perfect to use you st it stops you from locking up the fronts and the rears uh, whereas for the brake bias i'd say keep it at 56 all the way in uh, all corners maybe 55 in the middle sector and tire pressures you want to be using minimum all the way that is the fastest way around in this game uh, minimizes overheating when you have more tire pressure in this game 
then a little adjustment if you want adjustment for the rain you can go up on the downforce to 45 rear wing uh, if it's a full wet session uh, or you know just maybe plus five rear wing will do and uh, for the right height i'd say go up to 24 on the front and 60 on the rear right height to give you a little bit of ground clearance in the rain and there you go that is a track guide and setup guide for mexico i'll see you next week for brazil take care